And I noticed in my life that over my life, my whole period of life, that I had really developed one emotion very well in my life. But that emotion happened to be anger. I related everything in an angry way to everything. That was the development I'd done of my emotional skills, anger. Compassion, love, mercy, all those. I didn't know anything about them. I knew anger. Y'all with me? My, my whole idea of love was as well, just shoot it and put it out of its misery, and that was love. I grew up in a hard ranch in life and a hard family, and life was tough and rough, and you know, and that's just the way it was. But it's only when we start recognizing what's deficient in us. It's only when we start asking for the help or the Holy Spirit to come into our life and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me here. Folks, it isn't like God doesn't know it's in you. You're not hiding nothing. It's not like, well, we don't want to pray about that. Don't say anything. He's going to know. He already knows. He made you. He created you. He knows everything that's going on in your life. He knows why you're like you are. You can't go to the Lord and say, Lord, you just don't understand how this has happened in my life. You can't do that. He already understands. He already knows. He knows everything. He understands it totally. He just wants you to have a Pentecostal experience by saying, Holy Spirit, come and help me in my life. I mean, well, let's get down into really what Pentecost means. Comes the time that we have to recognize the Holy Spirit in life and say, Holy Spirit, I gotta have your, I need a helper. We all need a coach to help us through life. We need somebody that's smart and can think and can talk and say, hey, don't, but as long as you won't call evil evil, he's not gonna work. He said he wants us to be simple, innocent. To be able to go to God and say, God, you know, <clears throat> this doesn't seem to be profiting me much doing this. Uh, is there something wrong with my life? Do I need to change? What an honest prayer. What an honest prayer is to go to God and say, look, God, I, I, this is the way I, this is the way my mother did, this is the way my, my grandmother did, this is the way my, you know, well, that's the way it's always been done in our family. And we always say, is there something wrong, Lord? Is this not right? Well, if not, what would you show me? Honestly say something like that. Honestly pray something like that. Whoo! Then the Spirit of God's going to come into your life. He's going to come in there. He's going to tap on the door of your heart. He's going to begin to talk to you. He's going to begin to show you things. You're like, really? I didn't know. I, thanks, Holy Spirit. Now, how do, I, how do I have the strength to not do that again? Well, look, you need to change this. You need all to, really? Okay, well, oh yeah, stop doing that. Stop doing this. Oh, do this, do that. Oh, okay, now. And all of a sudden, things start changing. But as long as we live a life, we say, well, whoa, I don't know about that Holy Spirit. I mean, I've been around some crazy Pentecostals, and I don't want to go with those. Oh, don't let me get around them. I don't want to go like that, Lord. Wait a minute, we're talking about the Spirit of the living God. What are you going to do? Get to heaven and say, well, listen, God, I'll talk to you and Jesus, but I'll keep the Holy Ghost away from me. It scares me. What? What? You can't, you, you know, you don't, you get the whole package. Well, I don't, yeah, you may have been taught wrong. You may have seen things wrong. You, people may have done things that freaked you out and whatever. And that's, but that's not meaning that that's the way it all is. We got to know what the truth is. And we got to walk in truth, church. And you're not going to make it. The Bible says in the last days that even the very elect would be deceived by the de deceptions that go on in the world. And I don't want to be deceived. But it says the spirit of truth will come upon you. He'll set you free and he'll tell you what's right and what's wrong. Oh, by the way, the world didn't come to an end last night. We're here. I guess he was wrong. He didn't hear the spirit of truth. I could have told him right off the bat he was wrong. The Bible says, yes, read your Bible. The Bible says right there, no man knows when the time's coming. Not even Jesus. <clears throat> the, 
the craziest thing I heard so far about making money off this deal, because that's what it's about, folks. It's about money. You just go right down to the bottom line. It's about cash and taking money off people. Is that that, that, that groups of people set up websites stating that if you thought you were going to be gone for fourteen ninety five, that they would take care of your dogs and cats while you were, you know, since you're going to be gone. So, I mean, I don't know if this is the atheist convention got together and came up with this or what the, you know, what the deal was. I don't know how they came up with this, but people were sitting on 1495 to take care of the dogs and cats. Listen, I'm out of here on the first boat load and I ain't worried about my dogs and cats. They can fend for themselves and sort it out themselves. People making money off that. Wow. People need to read their Bible. They need the Holy Ghost to sit there and say, "Uh uh-uh. Right? Church, that's a little deception and people are falling for it. You're telling me that if, if Jesus said that even the elect would be deceived, it's going to be such a, such a, you know, uh, events taking place that are, that are so deceptive. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to come to this Pentecost and we need to say, Lord, we need everything you got. We want to be full to overflowing. We, want, we need you every day in our life. We need you come, come on, Holy Spirit, come in our life and fill us and overflow in us and, and give us wisdom and guidance and, and direction and, and everything that we're doing. Amen? Now, but we got to call evil, evil. We got to quit saying, well, you know, I hadn't gone to a seance lately. Please, God, I'm not doing any evil. I hadn't cut up a cat, black cat lately. Let's call it what it really is. These things in our life that come up that are not pleasing. How do you know? It's, listen, don't not, not that it's not pleasing to your denomination. I'm talking about it's not pleasing to the, to, to, doesn't line up with the word of God and it's not pleasing you. Jesus, you, listen, if you wouldn't do it in front of Jesus, don't do it. I love that. What would Jesus do? You know, when that was a popular thing, everybody had a bracelet to what would Jesus do? Well, if, listen, if you wouldn't have Jesus over your house and do it in front of you, don't do it. Look at the person beside you. That's good. I mean, that just pretty much shuts it down, doesn't it? There's been a few times in in like a fit of anger that I've tried to uh, to say that the Lord would have been with me on it, but when things simmered down, I really did know I was wrong. (laughs) <laughs> Y'all with me? Okay. So, let me show you something. Go to the book go to the the book of Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59:19. Y'all stick with me on this for a little bit. Isaiah 59:19. Great scripture. It says, so, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes in, I've heard this verse both ways. Some translators say that that's not really written right. It, they've got the comma in the wrong place that it should be saying when the Holy, when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit will come in and lift up a banner. Either way, listen to me, either way, when the enemy shows up, the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, who's going to win? I mean, there's no contest, but when the enemy comes in, let's just say the enemy comes in like a flood. The Holy Spirit raises up a standard. Now, what does it mean we raise up a standard? We don't, you know, we don't do that nowadays. We kind of do. You know, you put a sign on your front gate that says whatever the name of your ranch is or your house is or your whatever, if you have that. It's kind of a standard, but a standard was, you know, an insignia, a flag, a banner that, that stated who, whose property it was. So when the enemy comes into your life to 
attack you or to get you to get over in the, uh, into not believing in Jesus and walking in fear or walking in, you know, whatever. Then the Holy Spirit just steps up when you invite him in. He said, Holy Spirit, show, show, help me here. And just puts down the stick, puts down the standard, stakes it in the ground and says, they belong to Jesus. They belong to Jesus. And then that's it. That's the end of it. There's no more fight. There's no more wrestle. There's no more uh, talk. There's no, the enemy's not going to say, well, yeah, no, no, no. He's already stuck the standard down and said, no, this ground. This ground belongs to the king of kings. The kingdom of God is here. So, wait a minute. Now, that's the kind of benefits we get all the time, but we're scared of the Holy Spirit? That's the kind of benefits he's offering us, but doctrine, church doctrine has taught us, well, listen, you know, that's what the, that's what the crazy church does down the street. We don't do that. Hold on now. I don't know about y'all, but I like to win. 